Welcome to the Monday Night Muscle. I'm joined by the voice of professional bodybuilding, Mr. Bob Chicarillo, and your original classic physique Olympia champion, Danny Hester, the Hello. OG, Big Danny. <laughs> Welcome to Olympia country. We know that you are on a sprint, basically, for the next Joe Weider Mr. Olympia weekend coming up on the strip in Las Vegas at Planet Hollywood. Does that sound exciting for you to be back on the strip? Yeah, and going to be in Planet Hollywood is... It just makes like it's Christmas, you know, like it's all new. Because I've been at the Olympia quite a few times already, and you know, you're kind of used to the same program and everything. So this actually makes it a little bit more exciting too. A little new life yeah. coming in. Uh, yeah. It's a and good I'm, change. We're looking forward to it. Um, bodybuilding for the first time in many years will be on a theater stage. Uh, now this yeah. is no ordinary theater. This is the Zappos Theater, as many people know now. In the heart of Vegas, a lot of your your big acts. Uh, go on there. A lot of your big singing acts. All this thing is huge. Yeah, uh, it's fantastic, and, and it's. I think I personally, uh, I grew up in theater type settings yeah. in bodybuilding, as, as we all did. Yep. About the same age, so um, that to me has always been bodybuilding. Like, yeah. like it's a little more intimate. It's, you know, like I always want a curtain closing. You know, that yeah. type of thing. Oh, because before it was in more of an arena. For it's an arena, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, it's great. And, and Swallows then, you up. Yeah. And that's got its advantages, too. I mean, there's things you can do in an arena that you can't do in a theater and vice versa. Uh, but there's always something about, because maybe that's how we grew up, that that's yeah. always just been more bodybuilding to me. Yeah, it's a little bit more intimate. You're closer yeah. to yeah. the fans. And they can do more things with the visuals that a big arena can actually swallow you up. In. The cool thing is, on that, on that note, is uh, there's not a bad seat in the house. So the one good thing about a theater is, is the way it's set up, you can literally be anywhere in there. I don't like a theater because some of the seats in the theater, of course, you're kind of sideways to the action or you're you're looking up at the big screen. So uh, this would be a great platform for you, Danny. Would you? Yeah, no, I mean, what we do is we, we're performing, you know, it's it's theatrics for me. I mean, you've done the work in the gym. Sure. You know, when you get on stage, it's theatrics for the most yeah, part. Yeah, and this year is going to be a lot different because in the past, you were at the expo sometimes doing pre judging mm -hmm, right, and, yeah. and then coming over to the main event, I think it's all taking place on the main stage this time around. But Danny, yeah. we, we talk about um, you know some of the top names in the business and the top places in the business. Gold's Gym comes to mind, the mecca yeah. of bodybuilding. Um, there's always two names that, that come if you've been in this industry for a while. Uh, Charles Glass, who obviously yeah. everybody knows. Charles is, and the Gold's is one. Um, but you have been there almost as long. Yeah. <laughs> you, uh, so when the name Danny Hester comes up, you automatically think Gold's Gym. How, how's it yeah. been training there at the mecca all these years? You know, I've been very fortunate. Uh, I think if I would have been in Iowa or somewhere else in the Midwest, it, it would have been a lot harder to get recognized. How is it differently training a celebrity compared to a bodybuilder? Uh, big difference. Uh, it's You have to adapt to what their schedule is. You have to adapt uh, what role they want. Sometimes even their manager will call you and say, hey, don't get them so big. Mm. <laughs> you know? yeah. So yeah. it's always, you know, someone wants something and, and then all of a sudden you, you're getting them where he's going to peak on a time where they're going to shoot and then that gets delayed another month or two months because of finances. So it's, it's you know, it's really interesting, but it's, that's why it has to be kind of a, a lifestyle and you have to learn to really keep them motivated. Bodybuilders are already kind of motivated because that's mm -hmm. their passion. Um, but you know, a lot of these actors, they'll get in incredible shape after the role, they'll just get out of shape again. It's <laughs> One thing amazing. we saw with the evolution of the sport is the inclusion of classic physique, which came after men's physique. Mm -hmm. A lot of the men's physique guys graduated into the classic, yep. and now what we're seeing, Bob, is some of the classics are now moving into the 212 and even into the bodybuilding arena. It, Danny mentioned earlier that he's staying true to just yep. staying pretty much like, do I want to say fit? Yeah. Like, you don't want to get too big. Like, in your mind, you don't want to get too big. You don't want to... Well, yeah, that's never going to happen. I mean, you don't <laughs> well, just wake up all guys get really big, right? No, oh. that's true. That's true. I'm not... Yeah. There's a few... I mean, in my opinion, there's there's a few uh, reasons for that uh, and ideals behind it. Um, if you're a younger guy and you're getting into the sport, um, you're growing. You know, you're mm -hmm. building. You're building muscle. You know, years of going on. Um, so you can kind of find a different niche or maybe it's a different path that you're going to take. If you get too big for one, you, obviously we have another platform for you. Um, Danny turned pro relatively late in, in your yeah. career, uh, age-wise. Um, so you had already been training. I mean, everybody knows who you are. You've, you've, you've been a, a million shows. Um, you got your pro card. And classics seem to be a perfect fit for you, uh, but not something you're going to outgrow anytime soon. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely a passion of yours. You know, you, you fit that mold, and obviously our first classic Olympia champ. Um, in the, it's been what four years, I think, since four, you won. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, have you seen any changes in that? It's a, it's a relatively small period of time for a sport, but have you seen changes from year one till year four now? Um, 
No, I think everyone, because you know, bodybuilding and the judges are the same. Sure. They just classify it classic, um, but they still have the same criteria, as definition, size. You know, that's that's going to be king. Sure. You got to come in condition, and that was a question of how I wanted to come in the very first Olympia because a lot of people said, "Well, this is classic. If you come in too hard, they might penalize you." And I'm thinking, these are the same judges out here judging the freaks, right, right. the monsters. Yeah. You know, and it's conditioning wins. And so I said, you know. What I'm, I already have my symmetry. That's what I'm known for. Posing, I got locked down. So what do I have to do? I got to come in condition. If, if you seen any changes with the competitors you're going against? Uh, I think I, the changes I would have to say everyone is coming in shape now. Mm -hmm. The condition is all the way deep. Before it was like you know you knew who the top guys were going to be. Sure. Now it's that lineup is like everybody's bringing it. Yeah, one condition of the, one wise. of the tougher divisions. When you get caught up in the weekend that's the Olympia, which is massive for our sport, are you able to take in any other other nuances that are happening? Are you able to watch the open bodybuilding? Are you able, are you interested in watching the men's physique or the women's bikini? Or are you just do your bit on stage, go back to your room and wait for your call? Sometimes it has to do with how you're gonna place. So if you know you're out of if you know you're out of the, you know, you're out of the running, you might as well watch the show. Yeah, that's that's keeping it real, right yeah, there. Yeah, right yeah. Now. You know, um, and then if you have some friends, you know, that might be in some other divisions and stuff that you're trying to support too. Um, and if you just feel in the mood that you want to be social, you know, because a lot of times I've made a lot of good connections and networking when I didn't really feel like going out, but I knew it was important because this is the big event. You know, you're 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 given a platform, so don't waste it by just sitting in your hotel room. Just go out there, and I've met some of the best people and made the best connections, even at the times when I didn't feel like going out there. Danny, classic was a natural fit for you. I mean, when, when this thing came around, it was like, oh man, that's perfect for a guy like a Danny Hester. Your name was one of those names that was in the in the mix, um, Sean. If Classic physique was around in your era. Mm -hmm. um, is that an avenue you might have looked at? As it's still, it's an Olympia title. It's classic bodybuilding, right. which is what you started with. And your physique certainly, much like Danny's, that's what makes me think of it. Would have fit that mold. Is that something that you might have gone for? Not me personally, no. And I'll give you some reasons why. Mind you, I arrived in bodybuilding in 1983. Yeah. That was the year that Samir Benu won his first Olympia. The year before that, in 1982, that was the year Chris Dickerson won his first Olympia. Yeah. And before that, it was Franco Colombo. What do all three of those guys have in common? They're all my height or shorter. Height. <laughs> they're my height or they're shorter. <laughs> but they're all lighter than I was. Yeah. I mean, Samir Benu was competing True. under 200 pounds, yeah. I believe. So for me, I would have thought and believed that I could do what they just did. And they were the best in the world against the biggest in the world. Sure. Um, with Classic Physique coming along when it did, Naturally, the prize money was way less than what they were offering the big guys. So it comes down to a matter of economics, too, because I always, once I started getting into bodybuilding and had some success, it was about the business of bodybuilding. You can find some bodybuilders. I remember Ronnie Coleman uh, in 2001. I think you, were you in that Olympia in 2001? I was you turned pro that year. there. I was actually in the Olympia in 2002. So yeah. Ronnie was very candid about the idea that, you know, he competed in the Olympia and made nothing at all. Yeah. He didn't complain. That's right. Um, well, I complain. By the time I had arrived at the Olympia, for me it was a business. Sure. Um, and so I'm, mon I'm trying to monetize every aspect I'm doing as a professional athlete because of what I have to sacrifice. The friendships, the relationships, the amount of food I had to eat, the amount of time I had to invest. If I had done all that stuff and applied it to being a lawyer, yeah. uh, a, another athlete in professional sports, I'd be getting compensated for it. So I didn't do it for the love of the game. Um, and so I had to follow where the paper went. And the paper was in the open bodybuilding. Yep. And the more money you could make on the stage, it would sit, somehow bleed over into the other aspects, your popularity aspect, the magazine covers, the t-shirts, the posters, the, the videos. So I had bills to pay and, and, and I had sure. ambitions outside of competition that I believe Ronnie Coleman, if you took the prize money away, yeah. there's always that one. You take the prize money away, Ronnie doesn't, he'll do it because he loves it. Yeah. And that was what we all loved about Ronnie, is that Ronnie He's wasn't- He's still doing he it. Was, yeah, he wasn't <laughs> competing for a paycheck. That's not a yeah. knock on him. Yeah. But uh, I didn't want to work for free. And I, when I got the pro card, I thought it was a business. So for me, I would have I stayed with bodybuilding. Sure. Classic physique would have been something I could appreciate and enjoy. I would have, followed, I would have had Franco, Franco, uh, Frank Zane in that category. Lila Brada would have been in that category. Yeah. Uh, even Bob Paris could have been in that sure. category. Yeah, absolutely. But they were just, you know, they were able to, to survive in the open bodybuilding like I was, so why not stay bodybuilding? Danny, uh, Jose Raymond, uh, the, the most decorated amateur NPC bodybuilder of all time. Still, today. To this day, yeah. yeah nobody, nobody will ever. He, wow. This guy won 100, you know, he yeah, could have turned pro 20 years before he did. 
Um, and he didn't turn pro because there was no reason for him to, according to him, until we came up with the 212 division. Yeah. If the classic physique division is not around, do you tur- do you compete as a professional? Yeah, I would have did the 212s. I was going to do the 212s. Because for me, it's about taking my discipline to another level. And sure. I've always needed competition to do that. You know, it's one thing to do magazine shoot and this sure. and that, but it's not the same. Let me ask you, where we're at in this world, in this economy, in our sport, if you had a son, he's 17 years old, he comes in, he says, Dad, I want to... I want to be like you. I want to. I want to compete. I want to be a bodybuilder. On a scale of one to five, how encouraging you, are you? Are you encouraging him that yes, I'll, I'll ride that out with you all the way up to the scale of five, or are you cautioning and keeping him down at a one and trying to steer him in another direction? Um, I just want to make sure he does it safe. You know, I want to make sure he does it where he's enjoying it too. And then if he's good, you have to be realistic. If he just has terrible genetics maybe hopefully it wasn't income from my side <laughs> you know I'd have to say you know you're gonna go so far but you can still do it because you love it and there's social media you know there's a lot of guys that are killing it that wouldn't win a show if they competed um, so there's a lot of avenues but it definitely has to do with being healthy and if you're enjoying it right and that's where I still am we were talking earlier yeah. with Linda Murray eight-time Ms. Olympia amazing winner. she looks um, great she does look great for her age and she looks great period yeah, yeah. but we have the re- re- resurgence of the Ms. Olympia championships yeah. coming back is that in your economy at all? Does that excite you, or is that something you know something about? Now listen, you can't compete against the girls. Yeah. <laughs> no, you can't. Hey, these compete. days, you never know. Yeah. Right? But I mean, I followed women's bodybuilding. It paralleled me. I remember I was yeah. good friends with Tanya and I. And I watched and witnessed yeah. Linda's uh, career and, and Laura Cravel. I came up with some awesome yeah. female bodybuilders. Is that something that catches your eye as a as a male? It does because the aspect of of if they bring back the posing like they used to, then I'd be very interested because that's where I got a lot of my, I guess, passion is from the female bodybuilders too. Just just the, you know, other than than yeah, the presentation and you could just feel it. You know, they projected it. They're far more inventive than the guys. Yeah, yeah, they're creative. They come up with uh, with beautiful routines. Absolutely. Uh, And even from a classic standpoint, because you see some entertaining ones, you see some classic ones. Uh, but but girls are, are much more inventive, I think, when it comes to posing. Mm-hmm. Um, but classic gave you an opportunity to showcase um, your style, which incidentally is, is much like Sean's and some of those great names you mentioned, Lee Labrada, uh, Bob yeah. Paris. And uh, do you think some of that passion's been been gone, even from um, like I got to be honest, even some of the classic routines I see yeah. aren't really classic to me. I don't I won't call them not classic routines, but they. They don't seem to embody, like they don't take me to a, a place where it was what I would consider classic body. When I think classic body, I think of the old days. Yeah. I think of the Ed Cornies, I think of some of those old greats. Uh, even up into the 80s, Sean, I mean, you know, actually. Steve Reeves. Uh, well, well, yeah, I mean, that was the guy who pretty much started the classic posing of the modern era. Right. Um, yeah. But I don't, I don't see a lot of classic guys sometimes hitting what I would consider a classic That's routine. Not. Why? I think it's not uh, connected with their physiques because every time when I would train, I would look in the mirror. I can almost imagine the certain shots that look good on me. And it also has to match what you're trying to get at. You're not going to hit like a crab shot right. during you know a slow kind of gotcha, yeah. crescendo. And it's it's got to fit like Mike Ma- 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 Matarazzo. Mike yeah. Matarazzo. He was really hardcore, you know, ACDC, yeah, yeah. and that got me pumped up. Even if I didn't even like listen Queen. to that music, I was like, wow. You know, he's sure. like hitting those crab shots Different all day style. long. And I'm like, oh, yeah. I want to try that. Sean, is, is, I, I got to ask you this, because you were known for your class, and it was truly classic posing. Is part of the problem that you can't really do a classic routine to a modern song? Because the, the music sometimes seems to, like I've seen routines like the posing look good, mm-hmm. but it almost seemed like the music yeah. didn't quite match up with it. How important is that? Well, I mean, that's where it starts for me. It, I mean, if, I, if I'm not in tune with the song, I can't find the beat, I can't find the rhythm, I certainly won't fall into the flow. Um, but but I mean, again, you, you can't do a classic routine to Guns N' Roses, right? I mean, no, no, you, you can't. So it does take, you have to have that artistic eye. I mean, Danny's an artist. Mm-hmm. Not every bodybuilder is. Right. There's a lot of bodybuilders. Gary Stratum, I mean, he could build the frame, yeah. but he couldn't perform. Paul Dillette yeah. <laughs> put all that muscle on and you couldn't show it. Frankenstein. So it's not automatic that you are going to be that guy that because you have a beautiful physique, you can show it off. We've seen countless beautiful physiques with two left feet. <laughs> um, and then we've seen some beautiful physiques that can't get quite right, where Lila Meyer and Matt Mendenhall come to mind mm-hmm. that they're almost there, right? Even Cedric. And, yeah. and, and even Cedric, and Cedric has 
calculated pick the right shows to find those victories here and there. Yeah. You know, he's won several shows. He just hasn't won the big one. But Cedric, ha- he's 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 in tune with his physique. It's a classic. Now, game. now there's a guy. Uh, let me get your opinion on this, Danny. So Cedric, you've seen compete many mm-hmm. times in the Olympia and all that. His posing is definitely unique. Um, I, I wouldn't say it's classic, and it's certainly not like a Branch Warren style routine, but. I've seen all kinds of different shades of, of stuff that Cedric. What do you think of, of his presentation? It's, it's, it's definitely out of the box. He's very inventive. Uh, but what do you think of that style? I think he's got such a fab, I mean, amazing physique. He's not quite doing it justice, to be honest right. with you. He should really pick one style and just go at it really strong, hit it precise. I mean, he would blow everyone away. He's well, kind of I mean, in the middle. Yeah, I mean, I've seen him do some Arnold-esque style yeah, posing, and right. it's... Few people can actually pull off some of the, like that three-quarter back shot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's as good as Arnold's was. Well, I mean, when we start talking about bodybuilding, I mean, you, you, you can't overlook someone like Melvin Anthony, what he brought to the yeah. stage in terms of yeah. the entertainment value and then the sheer posing value. Um, some people can get it. Even Darren Charles was tapping into it. Uh, there are a few artists that came along that kind of got the idea that I got to do the show. John Brown. Got to do the routine. Yep. Yeah, John Brown. Um, and not everyone's going to get it. And right now we are really down, scratching the bottom, trying to find those guys uh, yeah. to raise and elevate their so, game. I mean, you mentioned. I mean, Melvin, Durham, Charles, uh, uh, Tricky Jackson. Like that. It seemed like at one time, like there was a bunch of these guys. Which yeah. and, and you MC a lot of shows as I do. I would look forward to these guys because you know it is. It's a little boring at a show. And classic routines, while it could be great, they're not sometimes the most exciting things. They're very yeah. interesting to watch. But you need those guys. Yeah. We don't have any of those guys anymore. No, but like, I can't think of one pro. Like when you go to a show that does a Melvin style, and some of those guys used to bring down the house. I mean, I remember Melvin. Yeah. Uh, some of his routines and Durham, dazzling Durham Charles, man. He would just, Tricky Jackson, so interesting and inventive, but the, the pop locking and all that kind of stuff. All those guys are, is it a bygone era? I don't know. I mean, we've thrown down the gauntlet. I'm hoping 2020 brings back a little bit of something, something. We've been beating this dead horse for quite a while, challenging the athletes to bring it up your game. Arnold's giving away $10,000. We saw uh, Sergio Oliva Jr. win the $10,000 award at the Arnold Classic this year. So I'm hoping some of these guys are hearing the message. If we say it loud enough and long enough, maybe they will start to take that extra step and elevate their game. You know who could do one of those routines and doesn't? Hmm. This guy, I could. Man. You, you got a breakdancing no, back, I, really, don't you? I do. Yeah, a lot of people. I've always, a lot of people don't know no, that you came yeah, from breakdancing. I, I did. I was been holding it back. I was on American Bandstand. I was on Soul Train. American Bandstand. Yeah. Wow. The original set with Dick Clark too. Yeah, and he was in the Kentucky <laughs> yeah. Derby back before he was bodybuilding yeah. back in the day. You were but, uh, a horse yeah. in his prior life. Yeah. We're gonna get to see him again on stage, December the seventeenth to the twentieth at the Planet Hollywood in the new Zappos Theater. Danny Hester will be competing in the Mr. Olympia. Make sure you get your tickets at MrOlympia.com where we're going to bring you all the contest coverage. And if not, we will see you live in Las Vegas on the Strip. For Bob Chick, Dan Hester, I'm Sean Ray.